snack, 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 snack. One, 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 one. Hmm. Which one do I like better? What was that? Did I hear something? I have ninja things. I just saw sick. Nah. Maybe no, nothing. It was nothing. Oh, work, work, work. I just like to work, 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 work. I'm just. I'm, am I here? What, what was that? What was that? It sounded, it sounded weird. I I wonder. That oh, must be nothing. Look at this. Work, work, work. I'm just working on my computer. Just working, working, working. Working, 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 working. Ha! Oh my god. <laughs> you scared me. What's going on here? I found this on your door when I was coming in. Well, what is it? A mysterious note. Some kind of mysterious envelope. Well, I wonder what's inside. Uh, Dad, I yeah? don't think you should open that. Why shouldn't I open it? I, I mean, what do you want me to do? The, on the back, there's the prop. What prop? I, I, on the back, it just says mysterious envelope. Anyways, this is crazy. So where did you find this? I found this on your door. My goodness. Here, hold that. Oh my goodness, this, this is crazy. It looks like something written, well, just today. It looks like, it looks like a, a photo, photo safari. safari. <laughs> okay. Hey friends out there in YouTube land and specifically my supporters on Patreon, you guys make things like this possible. So we want to say a big shout out and a thank you to you guys. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, supporters on Patreon get special photo safaris like this, special awards, special critiques and reviews of the photos that we put together together. This is kind of like a augmented reality. We've got a photo safari today. Today we've got five tips to help make photos look great on a rainy day. And this was really brought on because it's been raining for a few days, hasn't it, Robert? Yeah, it has been. It's been real dark on the outside, real gloomy. And so uh, we watch, I just haven't had a chance to go outside and photograph. Robert hasn't had a chance to either. And we were thinking today, what would make it great? And what would that be? A photo safari. Yeah, absolutely. So we got five tips coming to you right now. And we're going to interweave that with some action out on a location. So how cool is that? So this is an on-location mm -hmm. photo shoot, guys. Tips for photographing on rainy days. So tip number one is to choose a location that you don't usually go to. And this is real simple because if you are going to locations to shoot and your photos don't normally turn out, you'll stop going there. And if you're only going in the best conditions like bright sunny days, it may be that that location is better suited for a drab kind of gloomy day that gives it some kind of mood. So tip number one, Robert, what is it? Choose a location that we don't go to very often. That's right. Use that wisely. And tip number two, we're going to choose a camera and lens combination today that we don't often use. Normally what will happen is as your photography collection grows, you'll gain some lenses that are kind of hard to use. Mm -hmm. And you may even gain a camera body that you don't shoot with as much anymore because you got a new camera body. So the idea here is to, on a day that you normally wouldn't shoot in a location that you normally wouldn't go, use a camera that you normally don't use. And what we're trying to do is set ourselves up for something special to happen that we wouldn't have had the opportunity for originally. So tip number two, what is it? We choose a new camera and lens for our location that we're going to. That's right. Tip number three. This is the best one. And this is going to get us out of machine gunning. Choose on a number of images to shoot during your photo safari. 24 is an absolutely great number to start with, and it, it mimics, of course, roll film. But 12 is also good if you want to have a little bit shorter of a photo safari. And the idea is to limit this so that you're not shooting 100 images. Good Lord, how fun is it to get home with 120, 220, 340 images after you go out for an hour of shooting? I know guys that do that. And what we want to do is improve our composition and our photography. We want to improve how we think about it. The best way to do that is to what? is to take less photos. That's right. If we take less photos, we won't just machine gun. Uh, Man, we're moving quickly through this list. List number four, or item number four, tip number four, choose an ISO and stick with it. So choose one ISO setting. 
And this is going to get us used to seeing what our camera is capable of by adjusting aperture and shutter speed rather than adjusting ISO. Lots of times you can stick something on like auto ISO or like auto priority. What we're trying to do here is get out of this automatic mode and start shooting more manual. And choosing a very specific ISO will help you do that. In fact, choose an ISO and then use your aperture and your shutter speed values in order to make something really creative today. So what is tip number four, Robert? Choose a different ISO, ISO, right? Yeah. That's not a automatic. Try something more manual. Yeah. So choose one ISO and stick with it. Tip number five, final tip, final pro tip is pick a theme and stick with it. Uh, maybe it's a low perspective. Maybe it's shooting and photographing backlit subjects. Maybe it's looking for a particular type of street photography or building or duck or dog or thing. But the idea is, since you only have 12 photos, to begin to develop a theme by sticking to a theme and seeing what works for you. So if you go out and you shoot backlit and you shoot reflections and you shoot this, that, and the other, that's great when you're well-trained. But if you want to begin to develop consistency in your photography, shoot a specific theme on each photo safari that you go out. Got a bonus tip for you. Since it is a nasty day outside, bonus tip, um, remember that any of your images can be converted to black and white to get rid of unwanted color tones and saturations. In specific, when I shoot black and white, mainly it's on an overcast day because guess what, guys? I don't like the way overcast pictures look in color. So you know, if you come back and you don't like the way your pictures look as far as color saturation and everything, try changing the tonality by switching it to a monochrome, black and white, and then playing with those values. But that's what we've got. Are you ready to get moving? Oh, yeah. Okay, Robert. The first thing that we've got to do is choose a location that you usually don't go. So where would you like to go first?